Guys, give a warm welcome to Alati Lumpley. Thank you very much, and thank you um, for inviting me here today. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everybody. I've been asked today to give you a bit of um, talk a bit about my journey to becoming a writer, and um, so, and after that, I have a little bit I wanted to talk about um, something that was kind of close to my heart, and then after that, we'll give some time to ask, ask questions or whatever if you want to ask any questions after that. So um, I was born here um, a long time ago <laughs> um, in Adelaide. And when I was born, there was hardly any Muslims in Adelaide. So we um, we had a very, very small community. There were no Muslim schools. There were some mosques, but pretty much every Muslim knew every other Muslim. Um, when I was in year eight, I started wearing hijab at school and again because of no Muslim people I looked pretty strange because there were first of all there weren't that many hijabis in Adelaide full stop at that time um, but in my school it was just unheard of or it was just not um, anything that they had ever seen before so from those experiences at school I was able to get a lot of ideas um, and later decided to write about not what happened to me exactly, but I got some ideas about where I could go. One time the teacher put, um, got us all to put our names on top of a piece of paper and then that piece of paper was sent around to each member of the class and they needed to write whatever they thought that you were going to be when you grew up. So the way it was, the way what happened was, we'd write our name on a piece of paper, we'd pass the paper on, write, and then you'd get another piece of paper with someone else's name and go, oh, I think they're gonna be, um, I don't know, a doctor or whatever, an accountant or, or whatever when they grow up. And so that went around the whole class and at the end of it, we got our piece of paper back and we could see what everybody thought that we were going to be. And I only re remembered this just um, actually a few months ago. I'd actually completely forgotten about it. But when I got my paper back, about the majority of people had written that I was going to be a writer. Um, I had maybe one doctor, one teacher, one lawyer, um, but the majority of people thought I was going to be a writer. And I didn't know that at the time. I completely forgot about it until months ago really. When my son got, I was around 10 years old, I think I was trying to find some books for him to read. I wanted to find some books where there was Muslim um, characters um, and I was trying to find um, books that weren't educational books, that were just kind of books that he could read for entertainment, that showed him or that he could relate to um, and that he could actually enjoy. But I actually couldn't find that many. Um, for his age group. So then I kind of, I just, I, because I was a reader and I always loved reading from when I was a kid, I kind of thought, well, maybe I'll just look back to the, one of the books that I used to write, like reading as a kid. And I used to like reading this detective series called Nancy Drew. You might have heard of that series before. But um, there wasn't anything for um, Muslim kids or not much anyway so then I thought okay, maybe I'll just give it a go and I'll write it myself. Um, in 2016 was the first book that came out. I, In my spare time, so I was still working, so in my spare time I'd write a little bit here, a little bit there. Every week I'd just write like a little bit if I could and sometimes I didn't have time but some, whenever I had time I'd just write a little bit more and then after about a year or so I had enough for a book. Um, so I just went through the process of um, getting it edited and doing all the edits yourself and, and all of that. Um, and then finally, just one book became three after a while. Because I have a background in criminal law and I've worked with police and I've worked with de detectives, for me, that background helped me write a, like a mystery book. Um, but. You don't need to have that necessary background to be able to write. You can write about anything and you can do research. So that, that's pretty much my journey to being a writer. I wanted to talk about reading. Um, does anybody here actually enjoy reading? Oh, yes. Quite a few of you. That's great. 
sometimes I get this, sometimes I ask this question at, in schools and nobody puts their hands up. So I'm really happy to see that quite a lot of you like, actually like, like reading. I'll tell you it's something that can improve your imagination, can increase your memory, can probably improve your relationships with other people and your friendships and can probably make us all better human beings. A lot of people don't necessarily agree with that. Um, but I'm not talking about the reading that we all have to do as part of our school. I'm not, I'm not talking about the reading like the, the history books that we have to read or the science or the, the non-fiction books that, that we have to read as part of our education and that we need to do, or even the Islamic education books that we read. All of that is important. We all know that's important as part of our education. But I'm actually talking about reading fiction books, reading stories, um, reading the type of reading where you get into a character's head or some character that you haven't read about before, you start, you explore their thoughts, their feelings, their emotions, their experiences and looking at things from their point of view or from their perspective and um, can actually change the way we think about things. It can actually um, change the way we think about other people and can break down stereotypes and prejudices that we have as human beings. Um, and because of this, it's such an important, important tool that can actually have a really good impact on society. Um, does anyone have like a favourite book that they'd like to tell us about that they hasn't, has, might have changed the way you thought about something? Yeah. yeah, so I think um, when I was 18, I read The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. So he's a Russian writer. That book changed my life. It's amazing. And, and it can have such an impact on you as a person and how you move forward in life and how you relate to other people. Well, let me tell you the difference between, for example, speaking and reading. When you put a baby in, in a room full of people, after a while, they will just naturally learn how to speak. It's, um, most people naturally learn how to speak just by being surrounded by speaking people. But if you put a baby in a room full of books, in a library, they're not gonna automatically know how to read. They, they're gonna have to learn how to read. Reading requires your brain to work harder. It, it actually requires you to think about different things and create different pathways in the brain. Um, but when you read about a new character, a new place, new emotions or new different ways of thinking, your brain is actually picking up new pathways that hasn't, it hasn't experienced before. So can you imagine that a person is a reading an in-depth book about a, another person of a different culture that they never had seen before and never had really experienced, or they may have preconceived ideas or notions about, can you imagine how that can change the way a person thinks about that other race or that other ethnic group or that other um, culture? It is really powerful. A lot of people say, you know, you've got this brain that's engaged when you're reading and then you can, you know, live those experiences through reading, but well, we've got movies nowadays. Like, why can't we just watch the movie? Um, <laughs> Does anyone have like a preference between movies? Who, who prefers movies over books? Well, that's, that's pretty good. I mean, I wasn't that, like, I have been in classes before where there's absolutely nobody puts their hands up for preferring books over movies. So don't you see this is really encouraging. I'm not saying movies are bad. Like it's, it's really sometimes great to watch a movie. You can just sit there and not have to really think that much. I mean, you do have to think sometimes with plot lines and everything. But the difference between movies and books are that when you watch a movie, it's very passive. Um, it's passive entertainment. You're sitting there, the, the images are being fed to you, so you don't actually have to think much about what you're seeing. Whereas when you're reading a book, you have to, you, all you're seeing are words on a page, so your brain has to work a lot harder to fill in the gaps, and your, your imagination has to be activated. It's important to, for us to be able to kind of engage our brain, you know, and it's like working our muscles. Um, it's like when you want to work out, when you want to be, build 
big, strong muscles, you need to work them out, right? So it's the same with the brain. The more that we engage it, the more that it can help us to to do whatever it is that we want to do and help increase our intellect. It also helps us to de-stress, which is the opposite of um, what happens to the brain when we're watching TV. Um, for your book, like, what inspired your character? Was it just yourself, or was there other things that inspired the characters in this? Um, it's not based on me because I don't think I can, like I'm, I'm not like exactly like Aisha because a lot of the stuff that she does I wouldn't do and I would be too scared to do. <laughs> but, um, but there are some things that I do relate to and also some of my friends who've grown up, um, you know, as kind of in a, as in a minority position have, um, experience. So I take a, a bit from some of my friends, some of some of my experiences, some of um, everyone else, and I've kind of mixed it together to make Aisha. On the brain, the comic books have the same effect on the brain normally. Oh, I'm not actually sure, but I, pro I think it, it, it dep probably depends on the comic book and they're probably... Um, I don't know, maybe one of the teachers might know this one better more than me. I mean, it's got words. <laughs> it's got words. <laughs> I'm sure the language portion of your brain will be uh, activated. You've got the, the photo there that um, your imagination is probably doesn't have to be activated as much, but it's probably still got some benefit. What inspired you to study law? Law, I... I think what it was, was when I was in year 11 or 12, I can't really remember, I think it was year 11, I studied legal studies, I, I chose legal studies as one of my electives, and I actually found it really interesting. Part of that, um, part of that uh, legal studies, or one, one time we did a, um, we had an excursion to the courts in Adelaide, and so we were able to see the different, there's a, a place where you can sit at the back of the courtroom and you can actually see the cases that are being heard in court. So. We did that, and um, and I think that just kind of interested me. So I thought I'll study that. Um, since the kids are always asking about your lawyer job, I'm going to ask about your books. I'm sorry if you <laughs> answered this when I walked out before, but can you give us like a little summary on your main character and just what your books are about? Mm -hmm. um, so Ashadeen Mysteries. Um, Ashadeen is a young Australian Muslim girl who um, she loves solving mysteries, basically. <laughs> Um, and she loves travelling. So the first one is called the Istanbul Intrigue. She travels to Istanbul, um, finds a mystery there, solves it, and then she moves to Seville and lives. The, the first one's targeted at a younger audience, so 9 to 12. For this age group, I'd probably suggest the last one, which was a Lisbon Lawbreaker. Um, and it's um, all of the places that I have visited myself before, and, and I've loved all of these cities. So I thought, it would be really lovely to set um, something that, you know, set the story somewhere where I've been before and someone that I can actually describe. Um, how long does it take you to write these books? I can only write a little bit at a time. So I think the first one is the, um, the first one is the smallest out of all three. So that, the first draft took about six months. And each one, each one probably took about a year in itself. Um, I am. Um, I'm thinking of writing, at the moment I'm just doing another short story of Aishadeen. Just a, um, yeah, it's going to be a short story, but then after that I'm probably going to uh, think about, I'm going to have a break from Aishadeen and probably write something else, probably for adults.